What's going on, guys? Join one aka Chicago Joey, aka Big Pop, GTO, GTO Headquarters, Las Vegas, Nevada, World Series of Poker, Poker Series are all around the corner today. I'm going to talk about an investigation I've been working on now for a couple weeks since I came back into poker. And uh, yeah, I've been talking with former management involved with this operation. I've been talking to numerous players about their stories that were involved in this operation. And today we're gonna to be talking about some allegations being made. Remember, these are allegations. Then right now that there really is no proof in terms of what you might consider proof of guy on video doing something or anything like that. So these are allegations and more information will be coming out here in the near future. If you have any information about this one or anything else, email GTO investigations at protonmail.com. My team will take a look at it. So prime social, right? Let's, let's kind of, let's back up, right? So in poker, in the poker world for the game of poker, it doesn't make much sense. The regulations don't make sense. Certain states you can play it, certain states you can't, certain states you pay rake, other ones you can't pay rake. If it's a private game, you pay rake, they don't let you do that. And in Texas, Texas has gotten around the idea of taking rake. What is rake every time a pot takes place? they take money out of it. What is rake every time a pot takes place, they take money out of it. So in Texas, you can't do this. So what they do is they have it where you pay some type of membership fee to be able to go in the games. So what, is this, what does this kind of lead to exactly is that in also in Texas, the games aren't regulated. There's no real clear rules in place for how these things should be structured, that people can pop up. There's really no one police in the security. There's no one police in the shuffler decks. There's no one police in the live stream games. There's no regulatory board. Not to say regulatory boards always are going to get it right all either. And that doesn't mean, oh, 100% to trust anyone that's got some sort of association with a regulatory board or governing body board. But in this situation, the final decision maker is the owner of the place, the GM of the place. There's no run else you go to if there's some sort of dispute. There's no one overlooking things. So if you're a motivated operator, and you have access to putting on the game or the cards or the shuffler machines, then you can basically do whatever the fuck you want to do. And there isn't going to be much repercussion because who is going to, who's going to, who saw something? You'd own the place. You saw something. It's on your cameras, right? Like that, that's sort of how, to me, it seems like a lot of these things work. So around what I'm told by players and by former employees. I've talked with Justin Hammer, who was one of the tournament directors, one of the managers of the room. I talked briefly with the GM, Brent Pollock. So what it looks like happened here is that there was a big poker series to take place on March 10th. The, it was a prime social Texas poker championship. So $4 million in guaranteed prize pools, $2 million in guaranteed main events. And what does that mean is that when these big series take place, the action goes crazy. The card rooms are popping. Everyone's in town. People are making money. Businesses are making money. Everyone's pretty happy. So March 10th, this is scheduled to take place. And about 10 days earlier, around the beginning of March, the Prime Social decided to install some shuffler machines. Obviously, shuffler machines, they give you more hands. They make the game faster. Makes sense. So they decide to install three shuffler machines, one in the high stakes table, so the high stakes players can get more hands in. And then the other machines are on outer cash game tables at games like 1-3 and sometimes maybe 5-5 five, five or 2-5 for no limit hold'em and pot limit Omaha. So now they're running these high stakes games in the back room, 10-25, 25-50. They're inviting 
poker players, pros that we know. Landon Tice played in this game. The button clicker played in this game. He's a very successful online player. He was working with Doug Polk in the Doug Polk Challenge. Martin Zamani was in the game as well. Martin Zamani, you know, is just a guy, credible witness. You know, obviously we don't know about this fucking guy. This guy's a crazy guy. So the there's games running on. There's cash games going on the back there. And obviously it's in Texas. There's a lot of action. So what I'm told is there's one guy in the game who's just creating a lot of action. He's doing a lot of really crazy things. He's talking a big game. He's putting, you know, he's playing. We, we've all played with guys like this, right? So... And now what we're told is the suspicion started happening because the play style didn't make sense. There, this guy was this guy was giving a lot of action. He wasn't winning money, but then there'd be other players in the game who'd be winning a lot of money. And then the regulars in the game started suspecting that cheating was taking place somehow. So we got the shuffle machine. It's the shuffle deck two, uh, and uh, kind of looking through more information on the shuffle deck two, how the the, in the patent system for the shuffler works. It does seem to me that if you can get access to the shuffle machine and you know how to work the shuffle machine, there are potential exploits you can do with the shuffle machine where you could potentially relay information to maybe some type of device or some type of system. And also we know if you get access to the playing cards and you put some sort of device in the playing cards, then depending on how that information relays to your device, whether that's on your phone, or that's through some sort of audio system, whether that's through probably not marking a system, but we know if you can get access to the cards, you can know what cards people are gonna have. The, there's systems that will tell you which hand is gonna win. It doesn't matter what hand it is. So if you're playing with somebody else in a game and you guys both know that one of your friend's seats gonna win in the game and you you know what I'm saying? Like it, it becomes very easy to be able to figure out systems and strategies to manipulate the game for your side winning money. And even if you give action, even if one player loses a bunch of money, the other players in the game might win a bunch of money and then it puts you in a very profitable position. If I'm a professional, I'm looking around like, what's happening? Look at that guy. He's going on with this. This guy's fucking crazy, right? But this guy's always in that. You know, you, you see what I'm saying? This guy's playing 80% of his hands. I want to play 80% of my hands with this guy. Other guy comes on in too. He's playing a bunch of hands as well. This guy's crushing it. That guy's crushing it. This guy, he's losing. So this is what I'm told was taking place. Very. This is a common, common hustle. Okay. This isn't. This ain't reinventing the wheel. It's a common hustle. You get. You, get, you could get access. All right. If you get access to the the operational device, if you get access to the cards, and then you have other people in the game, then you're in a fucking good spot. So what I'm being told is that pros are being invited to this game. This game's running in the back room. And then at some point, the action guy gets banned because now the players, they're talking with the management. They're saying, hey, I think something's happening. What I'm told by management in this situation, by Justin, by Brent, is that they were looking. They're trying to watch these players. They couldn't come to any sort of proof anything's taken place. Now, obviously we know, maybe they're not incentivized to find proof. Maybe they're, you know, who, who knows what that relationship take place. That's something to me that, that stands out as, as interesting to think more about in this situation. So I'm told that this guy, the action guy gets banned from the game. So the action guy, they don't let this guy play in the game anymore. Okay, so I hear that and to me, a, a more common story, right? It's not common to hear management involved in the card room operations to come to you and say, hey, like, this is what we think's taking place, but we really couldn't prove it. But, you know, okay, we don't got no proof. Is there a video on camera? Is there is there a tape of it? You got a tape of the guy doing it? You know, what, what else kind of is there to go with? And I'm told by management, there were some other unusual things that they thought about the player where they decided to ban this player from the game. So then we go to the outer games and these are the outer one, three games. So now what I'm told by players and by management is that two players came into the games and just started fucking cleaning up these games. So they were really crushing the games hard. And then the shuffler machines were turned off. So they turned off the shuffler machines because they're like, you know, people are saying things like they, so they turn them off. These players either stop playing as much or they come back in, realize the machines are off and then they the winning session stop because the cash outs are tracked for these players. They win a certain amount of money. So if you, these certain players are cashing out a bunch of money, then those things end up being tracked in the situation. So management said, okay, you know, players are getting, are, are getting you know, concerned. They turn the machines back on. The players come back in, start crushing it again, allegedly. So these players start crushing it again. 
And then at some point in time, the players are like, you, you got to get these guys out of the game. So they turn the machines off again, I guess. And then the machines, they want to turn them back on. These two players come back in and then the players do a walkout where they go, we're not playing with these two people. You can't use these machines anymore. These shuffling machines got to be turned off. So then the shuffling machines get turned off, off. And then about 10 days ago, I'm told that they were completely removed altogether. So now you have Justin and you have Brent who management, and these two are now done working at Prime. They tell me that they quit, whether it's for this and other reasons combined. You guys know how your jobs get. Sometimes you get your jobs for a while. You know, live poker's picking back up. A lot of card rooms are taking place. A lot of opportunity out there. Prime Social's been through its own dramatic incidents over the years. Maybe you feel like, you know what? I don't really want to be involved in this anymore. So these two people are out. And when I talk with Justin more about it, he says that, there they quit they, he quit just because they didn't feel like there was anything that he could do about the situation they couldn't prove what was happening owner says it's not taking place so now you got these two guys that work their management staff they quit they're done you got the shuffle machines they're now out of there you have the two players they're allegedly out of town they left the fucking town with the money they got out of there so that's where we sit at right now is we have insiders who are saying that they strongly believe these are taking place. You have professional poker players who they strongly believe something was taking place. One of those situations where there isn't necessarily this, this hard proof about it where there's text messages or there's, there's people watching them, see them, pull out another card. So that's kind of where we're at right now. And this information was brought to me. And it did seem like a credible thing to take forward because if, I mean, listen, if you got a shuffler machine back in the back room and I can bring in all the high stakes guys, I mean, you run this operation, you're just fleecing people. So in, if I'm hearing these, these strong allegations, management quits, to me, that seems like something that you'd want to mention in the poker community and say, hey, you know, if you're going to go play high stakes down there, like at least be careful, like, uh, you know, understand what's going on, even though you should always be doing this in any game that you play, you should all, I always... I'm suspicious of this shit happening because it's just so easy to let this stuff happen. Especially if you're motivated. If you're running it and you're motivated, it's easy. If you want to stop it, it's easy to stop it too. But if you don't want to stop this kind of stuff, then it's real fucking easy to, to do. So I'm always suspicious of this. I've always been wary of this. I've played in a lot of private games before. There's a lot of crazy shit that goes on in these games. So that's really where we stand here. Are these shuffle machines able to be manipulated? You know, it really looks like they are. Now, of course, it's hard to get access to the shuffle machines. It's hard to be able to work on those shuffle machines. We don't know the specifics of how that might be. Obviously, we know it's easy to manipulate the cards if you're motivated and if you really wanted to. We know that there's devices that are able to transmit this information. So now it's one of those things where you have one side saying this didn't happen. You have other side saying this did happen. And now we're looking for more information from people out there if they might have any, you can message GTO investigations at protonmail.com about this or about anything else. Obviously, we've heard poker players before. They lose money. They say that, oh, this was cheating. You know, we hear this a lot. It, 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 this is an uncommon thing. But now this appears, they, these appear due to be pretty sa serious allegations. So, so you guys let me know what you think. Once again, I haven't heard anything else about anything happening with non shuffle machine tables. This won't be the first time. This won't be the last time these things are taking place anywhere. So... Be on your toes, stay aware, let me know what you think, and uh, take care, much love, peace out.